In October of 2019, the Arctic Initiative at the Harvard Kennedy School and the Wilson Center Polar Institute co-hosted a workshop together with Iceland's chairmanship of the Arctic Council. The primary goal of that workshop was to discuss ways of how we can address plastic pollution in the Arctic region. We did this in part to contribute to this symposium and despite several delays uh, due to COVID-19, we are pleased to offer key findings of the workshop, as well as several specific initiatives described at the workshop that may be of interest to you. The workshop brought together a diverse group of over 60 global thought leaders, stakeholders and experts that included indigenous leaders from Alaska and Norway experts and policymakers from uh, bodies like PAME, the Working Group of the Arctic Council, the United Nations Environmental Program and OSPER, as well as industry leaders from the tourist, fishing, recycling and circular economy spaces. The gathering provided the opportunity to advance the discussion of what would be needed in an Arctic regional action plan to address plastic pollution. The buildup of plastic in the Arctic Ocean is a growing challenge, as all of you know. I'm sure you've already heard, but it's bears repeating that an estimated 8 million metric tons of plastic enter the ocean worldwide every year. And over the last decade, the amount of plastic debris in the Arctic has increased considerably. Global warming has shrunk ice coverage, and that has allowed plastic debris to flow into the Arctic Ocean as never before. Our workshop took as its starting point the latest science on sources and concentrations of plastic pollution. This allowed workshop participants to explore different policy levers and innovations that can shape a successful strategy. We heard about promising case studies from the Arctic and also beyond. And then the workshop considered solutions to the plastic pollution problem that could be deployed in a way that leverages local knowledge and new technology. We compiled the findings from this workshop in a paper entitled Policy and Action on Plastic in the Arctic. And we published it jointly, the Harvard Arctic Initiative and the Wilson Center Polar Institute. Three key themes emerged from the workshop further developed in the report, they are, one, the critical role of engaging community and industry in local solutions to the plastic problem. Two, the value of using innovation to reduce the flow of plastics into the Arctic. And three, the need to focus on mitigation in addition to cleanup, since once plastic is in the environment, it's very hard to find and to clean up. We need to stop it from entering the environment to begin with. And now for a brief overview of several initiatives that were presented at the workshop. As David mentioned, throughout the workshop, we were able to hear from several experts about solutions that they found to begin addressing the plastic pollution challenge regionally. In writing the report and diving deeper through our case studies, we noticed that all solutions had two key elements in common. They engaged local communities and required cross-sector collaboration. We had the opportunity to learn from Chris Corbin, Senior Program Officer with the Ecosystems Division of UNEP, who shared some of the lessons learned in the creation of the Caribbean Regional Action Plan for Marine Litter. Like the Arctic, the Caribbean is home to an abundance of natural assets and is culturally diverse. Mr. Corbin spoke about the importance of recognizing that unique regional characteristics shape the kind of solutions that are most effective in a given community. Although pollution is a major transboundary concern for countries, the strategies that will be most effective in a specific country require tactics to be tailored to local experience. An example of local industry engagement was found in the case study of the Association of Arctic Expedition Cruise Operators which in 2018 launched a Clean Seas project, which seeks to reduce the use of single-use plastics on board expedition cruise vessels and enhance cleanup efforts in the Arctic. To begin this process, AECO conducted onboard surveys of memberships 
to identify all the single use plastics on board and then developed recommendations for alternatives, which have been shared among member companies and which are sent to guests before they arrive. AECO then teamed up with a number of local and regional and international efforts to partner in education and cleanup, including the Cleanup Svalbard campaign, which engages people visiting the Arctic in locally prioritized beach cleanups, pairing local priorities with industry actions. This sort of public-private partnership is proving effective in reducing plastic waste from the fishing industry as well. The Icelandic Recycling Fund, another project which was highlighted in our report, has the goal of providing financial incentives to increase waste collection and proper disposal. To begin tackling the challenge of ghost gear, which is discarded or lost fishing gear, which contaminates the marine environment, the Icelandic Fund engaged in discussions with fisheries Iceland and local producers of fishing nets. Through these discussions, the Icelandic De Recycling Fund developed a campaign to encourage the owners of fishing trawlers to take responsibility for used fishing nets and ensure proper disposal. In order to incentivize collaboration, the Icelandic Recycling Fund maintains a voluntary agreement with the fishing industry, allowing them to return gear to waste collection points without a fee. The fund then works with technology partners to recycle the gear. So now I'm gonna turn it over to our co-author and my collaborator, Marisol Maddox, who will talk a bit more about one of Icelandic Refund's technology partners, Plastics, which is part of this public-private partnership and touches on another one of our key elements, which is innovation. Great, thanks so much, Brittany. So Plastics, a company based out of Denmark, uses a circular economy model that increases the lifespan of plastic-based products like fishing nets, which are typically considered non-recyclable due to the presence of multiple types of plastic polymers. Plastics has overcome that challenge by breaking the nets down into raw materials that can be turned into new products. This is an example of a method that helps to keep manufactured plastics in the value chain and out of the waste stream. Algramo is a circular economy-based company that we also profiled in our report that is the brainchild of Chilean entrepreneur Jose Manuel Moller. From his time spent in Santiago, he noticed that the per gram price of products, such as household cleaners, is cheaper in bulk. However, due to limited liquidity, many people in low-income communities are forced to buy smaller versions of those products at a premium, also leading to increased waste burden on those communities with limited resources. El Gramo's solution is a reusable container and bulk dispensaries of these household products. The container is embedded with an RFID chip that earns credits for consumers to be applied to future purchases. Once the container reaches the end of its life, it can be traded in for a new one, which ensures the packaging returns to Algramo for proper recycling. And the last case study we did was on Rhizoform LLC, which was founded by Dr. Philip Amstislavsky, a professor at the University of Alaska Anchorage and a current Fulbright Fellow at the VTT Technical Research Center in Finland. Dr. Amstislavsky's work focuses on innovation in material science, namely seeking to provide a fungi-based biomaterial alternative to polystyrene, with an initial focus on two specific and common uses, material insulation in boxes used to ship frozen fish, a product which has seen vastly increased demand during COVID, and as insulation for housing. Current challenges include lack of financial incentives for innovation and resources for business development. It will be interesting, however, to see what kind of innovation incentives result from legislation such as the EU's Single Use Plastics Directive. Yeah, we learned from the workshop that if a regional plan is to be efficient, it's essential to listen to the communities and think carefully about local implementation. I experienced that there's a lot of enthusiasm around plastic pollution in the Arctic communities. And this is a potential that should be fully utilized as we move towards implementation of the regional action plan on marine litter in the Arctic. This kind of Arctic Council, Arctic state, business and community collaboration is crucial to address the plastic problem in the Arctic. The Icelandic chairmanship uh, of the Arctic Council was delighted to be a co-host of the workshop on policy and action on plastics in the Arctic Ocean at the Harvard Kennedy School in October 2019. 
it was very valuable to get together subject experts, thought leaders, and diverse uh, stakeholders to discuss the issue of plastic pollution in the Arctic marine environment. I thought the report from the workshop contributed in a meaningful way to the forthcoming discussion in the Arctic Council on developing a regional action plan on marine litter. Hello from Alaska. Our workshop on plastic pollution was both alarming and inspiring. It was alarming because this terrible problem has come to the Arctic and it's getting worse every year. Inspiring because we heard great examples of people working together and through innovation and collaboration making a positive difference. I am hopeful that the Arctic nations can also make progress by working together. We are delighted that many of our findings highlighted in our report have proven useful to the ongoing development of PAME's Regional Action Plan on Marine Litter in the Arctic, particularly those related to recommendations encouraging community-driven solutions, collaboration with local industry, and innovation to mitigate the flow of plastics into the Arctic region. The Arctic region is too diverse for a single set of solutions to the marine plastic pollution problem. But we hope that by bringing together a diversity of experts from within the Arctic and from outside, we were able to provide positive foundations for a continuing effort in tackling the marine plastic pollution problem rooted in local solutions with a focus on innovation.